from the standpoint of a good free market conservative, I see a lot of these questions as being questions where Congress has to create the conditions in which the society will solve the problem. But Congress seems to think that it has to reach some sort of definitive conclusion and solve the problem. And Congress' job is sort of to create climates of predictability and certainty for investment. An investment of financial capital, investment of human capital, which is very important now. And instead, partly, well, I don't know, there are many reasons, but Congress seems to create conditions of maximum uncertainty. And I think if you look at that tech agenda that we published in The American, you would find two points. Over and over, uh, the things do relate to this idea of Congress creating certainty and creating predictability within which people can run market risks. And, but the second one is that the debates are all old. In the, you know, we've been arguing a long time about the R&D tax credit, about the repatriation of capital, the problems of the intellectual property system, you know, the patent office, and as we say, the tiresome net neutrality. And we're having the same debates over and over and over, and they don't seem to get solved. And I think one of the things that was clear from the last election is that people are getting tired of this, and rightly so. And they don't have a DC insider's perspective on just what is wrong, but they certainly know something is wrong. Moving forward and moving rapidly is accepting more, I think, of, of a, of a, of a uh, risk in all of this than we've here. We're, I think things have really ground down because we're in this sort of zero, you know, right, as, as people have mentioned, you couldn't get penicillin, you couldn't get uh, aspirin pa passed and, and, and accepted and approved nowadays. For, for distribution in this country. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. You're going to bleed, people say, you're going to bleed no, you know, death, exactly. you're going to right. have allergic it's, reactions, it's, 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 no, right. we're risk averse. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So no, no aspirin. And, well, and so. this drug over here, we're not going to... So you wouldn't have these. You wouldn't have these life-saving drugs. You just wouldn't. We wouldn't, wouldn't allow them nowadays because we have this sort of zero, zero, zero tolerance. So it really brings everything back. It just, it's a governor, it just channels everything back. Well. We have to break out of that. We have to accept a little bit more, um, as a society, as a larger community, uh, risk for the benefit of, of, of the larger community, i.e., you know, aspirin and... and, and yeah, but there is a, a complementary problem, and that is the government itself is very bad at error correction, in that people would be willing to accept higher chances of error if they thought error would be corrected. And, you know, Fanny and Freddie are a prime example of that, where people did see it, and then, of course, uh, various mechanisms were brought to bear to keep anything from being done. Right. And, you know, but over and over, you see the government unable to correct problems. And as I said at the beginning, um, in our list, our agenda, a lot of those are things, problems that have been around for some time. They represent policy errors, and they can't be corrected. I mean, you know, the great glory of the market system is that people can find different paths through it. And, of course, government and regulation tends to shut those down, tends to try to channel it. Like bio has a real problem now in that the FDA procedures do not fit the industry and the time from invention to market is stretching out so far as to make it totally uneconomical. And, you know, the long-term answer is that bio will go offshore. I think the cry from many of these CEOs that you're hearing now is, if you'll just get out of our way if you'll just help us you know resolve these these mm -hmm. these issues and leave us it goes back to this issue that Tom uh, that uh, Jim and I talk about all the time is the idea that having some sort of innovation czar you know that's what we need and I said my god this is exactly what you don't want these people that are the creative engines out there in the tech community many 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 of them are are here precisely because the more command and control environments of, say, Japan or China or elsewhere would would send them off to re-education camps, right? They don't. They don't. <laughs> let, not, let alone invest in them because they they are a little odd. They are they are involved in 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 you know, let's say social issues or whatever that that puts them you know out there. And but we. Here in this country, particularly in the environment that, that funds these uh, these individuals and the ideas they come up, understand that that's that that quirkiness, if you will, that that eccentricity is all uh, is exactly and and and, the, and taking the risk on these people. Which there's just no risk taking over in Europe. It's it's just 
barren over there in terms of venture capital. They don't have the culture that accepts failure. That, that investing these, and, and we want these people to come here. They're dying to come here. We want them to come here, and we need to create the kind of petri dish that, that allows this, this energy, this, this eccentricity, this being able to look into, a, into a, a blank canvas and see this gorgeous oil or look at this, this piece of marble and, and see this incredible you know, uh, 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 piece come out of that, that, that piece of marble. Just They have that gift, and we need that gift. 